How does the Baron's hovering technology work exactly? How long can he hover for before the juice runs out? What was the purpose of these additional spheres? Were they life support machines? Or something more sinister? All will be answered by the end of the video. In the universe of Dune, power and technology intertwine in the shadows of colossal sand dunes. Today, we delve into one of the saga's most iconic and enigmatic figures, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. A man whose very presence defies gravity, thanks to a mysterious technology. This is the hovering menace of Dune, the one and only Baron Harkonnen and his suspensers. Born on the harsh world of Gidi Prime, Vladimir Harkonnen ascended to become the nefarious ruler of House Harkonnen. His early life was marked by an unquenchable thirst for power, groomed to lead with an iron fist. Under his reign, House Harkonnen became a symbol of fear, leveraging blackmail, subterfuge, and outright brutality. In Frank Herbert's Dune, the Baron is depicted as a grotesque figure of gluttony and depravity, a stark contrast to the noble house Atreides. But it's the adaptations that have truly shaped our visual and psychological understanding of the Baron. From the 1984 Lynch film to Villeneuve's 2021 masterpiece, each portrayal offers a unique lens into the Baron's malevolent soul. Yet, it's his hovering technology, his suspensers, that physically elevate him above others. A metaphor for his lofty ambitions and disdain for the lesser beings beneath him. The technology that allows the Baron to defy gravity is known as suspensers. A marvel of the Dune universe, these devices counteract gravity, allowing the Baron's massive frame to move with ease. But how do they work? In the lore of Dune, suspensers utilize the same principles as the Holtzman field generators. The Holtzman field generators power the series' iconic shields and space-folding craft. By manipulating gravitational fields, the suspensors provide the Baron with a semblance of mobility that his body would otherwise deny him. The depiction of Baron Harkonnen and his use of hovering technology, including the adaptation involving two floating metallic spheres, is a fictional element not explicitly detailed in Frank Herbert's original Dune novels. This kind of device seems like a further evolution of the suspensors. But why did he need these two additional metallic spheres? Considering the technology within the Dune universe, several purposes for this extended hovering device could be theorized. My first guess is, they are for enhanced mobility and stability. The additional mechanisms might provide the Baron with improved mobility and stability allowing for smoother movements and possibly a broader range of motion. This could be especially useful for navigating complex environments or for dramatic effect, emphasizing his dominance and otherworldly nature. Number two, sustained hovering for long durations. Oh my God, I've never seen anything like it. Doctor, what is it, doctor? I'm fine. Get the t-shirt. The device could be designed to support long periods of hovering without requiring rest or recharge. This would be fitting for someone of the Baron's status and physical condition who would likely disdain the limitations that bind others. Number three, health support functions. Given the invasive nature of the device, with pipes entering his body, it's possible that the mechanism also serves a health-related function. This could range from regulating his body's temperature to directly supporting his life processes, perhaps counteracting the negative effects of his obesity or other conditions. Number four, a symbol of power and technological superiority. Beyond practical applications, the device's complexity and the visible integration with the Baron's body may serve as a symbol of his wealth, power, and access to advanced technology. It emphasizes the Harkonnens' technological prowess and their willingness to use such technologies to exert control and instill fear. Number five, defensive capabilities. While not explicitly stated, any technology sophisticated enough to achieve this form of hovering might also incorporate defensive features. Given the Baron's penchant for ensuring his personal security, 
It wouldn't be surprising if the device offered some protection against physical attacks or assassination attempts. Although they don't seem to save him from receiving a beating later on in the movie. Number 6. Control over physical presence. The device could allow the Baron to control his physical presence more effectively, enabling him to loom over subordinates or to make an entrance that reinforces his authority and power. Villeneuve's 2021 adaptation presents a Baron Harkonnen who is less the caricature of evil and more a chilling embodiment of it. His hovering not only accentuates his separation from humanity, but also his view of himself as above all. This portrayal strips away the flamboyance of previous adaptations, presenting his use of suspensor technology not as a mere convenience, but as a deliberate display of power. The technology is not just a tool, but a symbol of the Harkonnens' industrial might and their ruthless suppression of both people and nature. The Hovering Baron and all his incarnations serves as a powerful metaphor. It highlights the dichotomy between the Harkonnens and the Fremen, between those who manipulate and dominate through technology and those who adapt and respect their natural environment. Yet, on a more literal level, the suspensors reflect the consequences of unchecked indulgence, a body so ravaged by excess that it can no longer support itself much like the Baron's moral compass. Creating the Baron's hovering effect has challenged filmmakers since Dune's first adaptation. From practical effects and harnesses in the 1984 version to the subtle CGI of Villeneuve's film, the evolution of this effect mirrors advancements in film technology itself. Each method brought us closer to Herbert's vision, allowing audiences to truly feel the weight of the Baron's presence and the weightlessness of his immoral pursuit of power. Baron Vladimir Harkonnen remains one of science fiction's most unforgettable villains. His character embodies the dangers of hubris, the seductive nature of power, and the corrupting influence of technology detached from ethical considerations. Through the lens of his hovering technology, we see a man who has risen above the bounds of humanity, only to be ensnared by his own vices. So what do you think these two metallic spheres were for? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so please leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this Dune mini-documentary, subscribe to the channel. We also cover Alien and Star Wars from time to time. In fact, anything sci-fi or horror related. If you are interested in purchasing the advertised I'm Fine t-shirt, the link is in the description. Stay strong and I'll see you later.